Hey guys and welcome back to another Unrenchant 4 tutorial. In today's video we're going to be again advancing on our third person shooter minigame. In today's episode we're going to be going over damaging and killing the enemy AI. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So I get in and I can just shoot the enemies. You can see we can shoot them a different amount of time because we can change how much damage we're going to deal. And we have sound effects as well and when we do shoot them enough they will die. As again you're going to see here. So in future videos we are going to be changing this again so the enemies are spawning, we can change our accuracy of our gun so we can aim a little bit better and all that good stuff but again today we're just going to be going for shooting and killing the enemy AI and also we're going to be adding animations in a future video as well. So again today is the basic part, we're going to be advancing up on this in the future. So without further ado let me do this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So this is actually very simple code that we're going to do and also I'll leave a link in the description down below to the sound effects which I'm using and they're all free to use. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open up our bullet or projectile blueprint. So for me that is going to be content, game files, bullet, bullet BP which we have here. And previously we set it up so event hit, if it's an enemy we're going to do this code. And this code is just simply going to be one node. So out of true of this branch we're going to get apply damage. So simply apply damage like so. The damaged actor is going to be the other actor out of this event hit there, or just other. And I'm going to double click these to get some root nodes to again keep it looking nice and organized. And so now we're going to apply damage to the enemy AI which we are shooting. The base damage we can input whatever we like. What I'm going to do is just make it a random number so it's going to be different each time. So I'm going to get a select node under the utilities. And I'm going to add four different options which it could be. So I'm going to have it could be 10. 20, 30, and let's say also 15. So it's going to be 10, 20, 30, or 15 damage. You can obviously set this up and change it to be whatever you like, but that's what I'm going to do for me. And the index of this select is going to be a random integer, just the normal random integer there. And I'm going to set the max to be 3, because we have three options, so the max is 3. So it's going to be 0, 1, 2, and 3, which is obviously then four options for the amount we have here. I went over that more in my previous video. And the damage causer, we don't really need to do, it's not necessary, but I'm going to do it anyway, and that's going to be get a reference to self, because the causer of this damage is this bullet blueprint which we're in now. And then after the apply damage, we're also just going to get a destroy actor, so the bullet is then destroyed as if it was kind of gone into the enemy AI. So we compile and save, and that is it very simply done. Just this apply damage node is what we're using, and we've obviously set this up to give it random damage, so it's going to be different each time, it's not too repetitive, and we're destroying and getting rid of the bullet after we finish using it. So let's compile, save, and we can close the bullet, as that is all we need to do in there. The next thing we want to do is we want to open up our enemy blueprint. So for me that's game files, enemy, enemy BP here. And what we're going to do first is, you saw in our bullet we had the actor has tag of enemy, so that way we know it is an enemy blueprint. So we're going to select the enemy BP self up in the top left, and then in the top right we're going to search for tags, and we're going to add a tag, giving this one the tag of enemy, making sure it's spelt exactly the same way you spelt it in your bullet BP. So again, make sure it's spelt the exact same way, for me that was like this. And so now the code knows that this blueprint is an enemy blueprint so we do want to damage it when we shoot it. So I'm going to compile and save that. And now to use the apply damage node which we used previously, very simply what we can do is right click in the event graph and get event any damage. And that is going to be called when the apply damage node is also called. So when we call the apply damage, i.e. we've shot an enemy AI, it's going to fire off this event here and do the code which we want. And that's obviously going to be decreasing the enemy's health by the amount of damage inputted here. So we're going to create a new variable in the bottom left here called health and we're going to set this to be a float value like so. Compile, save and set the default value. For me I'm going to set it to be 100. You can change this around as well so it can be more or less but I think for me 100 is going to be fine. So compile and save that. So now to actually damage the enemy what we're going to do is set the health off of event any damage and out of the damage we're going to get a float minus a float. But we want to make sure that that is in the bottom value, not the top. Because the top value is going to be health. Because again we're doing health minus the damage, which will then go into the new set health there. So we are now setting the new health 
like so. So again, health minus damage from the event damage, setting health. So now we've decreased the enemy's health like so. However, what we can do to make this a little bit better is out of the float minus a float, we can get a clamp float like so, setting the minimum to zero, maximum to 100, and then connecting that return value into the set health there. And so what that allows us to do is make sure that the enemy's health will not go below zero, so we can do as much damage as we want, it's not gonna go below zero. And so then out of the set health, we're gonna use the return value of the float there and get a float equal equal, so an equal equal float like that, leaving this as zero. So if the health is equal to zero, and to see if this is true or false, we're gonna hold down B, left click to get a branch with a condition going into there like so. So again, if the health is equal to zero, i.e. true, we're gonna kill the enemy. If it's not, we're not gonna kill the enemy. So true will be a play sound at location. And this sound is going to be our death cue, which we're gonna make in a minute. And false is going to be just the normal damage sound effect, which again, we're gonna set up in a second. The location for both of these is going to simply just be get actor location like so. So it's going to be wherever the enemy is. And out of the top one, so out of true, we're also going to get destroy actor. So we're going to actually be killing and destroying the enemy AI out of the level so the player can't continue to shoot it and the enemy can't continue attacking the player and all that good stuff. So we'll compile and save. And that is the code now done for damaging and killing the enemy AI. All we need to do now is add in the sound effects to this. So I'm going to minimize this and go to my folder where I have the sound effects, which again I mentioned in the start of the video. You can download them in the description down below. So I have damage and I have death. Let me just delete these cues like so. So we're going to start with the damage and just anywhere in your folder in your content browser, I'm going to right click, go to sounds and create a sound cue, naming this damage cue like so, opening it up like that. Then I'm gonna make this just slightly smaller so I can select all of my damage sound effects, which I have. I have five, but you can use as many as you want or just the one. And I'm gonna drag and drop them into the damage queue. Then I'm just gonna move these over. Out of the top one, I'm going to get a random sound node. And again, more inputs so I can connect in all of these sound nodes into this random node like so. And the output will go into a modulator. Output to the modulator, go into the output of the actual sound queue. So what this is going to do is whenever we call this sound cue, so we want to play the sound effect, it's going to just play a random one of these five sounds we have. So it's not going to be the exact same one each and every time, so it's not going to sound really bad and really repetitive. It'll be any one of these five different ones. So obviously the more you have, the more random it will be, so the better it will sound for you. But these are just the five which I've got just for the purpose of this tutorial. What I'm going to do is also in the details in the top left, I'm going to search for attenuation and scroll down until we find override attenuation, ticking that like so, and that is what actually gives us the location-based sound. So what we can do is just minimize this slightly and then actually drag in the sound effect and the sound cue into the level. And then we can see this circle here is where it's gonna be at full volume, and this larger circle is where we're still gonna hear it, but it'll be fading out the further away we get there. So I mean, I think this size is gonna be fine for me, but you can obviously change this to be perfect for you. What you do is you just change these settings here of the inner radius and the fall off distance, increasing and decreasing those to get it working, looking perfect for you. I think that's gonna be fine for me, like I say. Because again, I don't need to be perfect just for the purpose of this tutorial. So I'm gonna save that because that is now all we need to do for this damage queue, like so. Close it, and now what we're gonna do is set up the death queue as well. So just for ease, I'm gonna select this and hit Control Z, Control C, go to my death sound effects here, hit Control V, just so I have all the settings in there and the random load and modulator and all that good stuff. Renaming this to death queue, opening it up, and then just deleting these nodes and inputting my death sound effects that we have instead. So again, that way it just makes it nice and easy to copy it over and just makes the process a little bit quicker. And what I'm going to do is just remove some of these inputs here. So it's going to be working perfectly for the amount we have for our death sound. And now again, this is going to work perfectly. So if I were to hit play, you can see it's going to play a random one of these sounds like so. So we're going to close that and input these into our play sound location. If the health is zero, so true, we're going to kill the enemy. So play the death cue. 
and if it's false, so the enemy is not dead but we've damaged them, we're going to set it to just be the damage queue, like that. Compile, save, this should be all of the code now set up and working for us. So let's hit play and test it out, you can see we have these enemies here, if I were to shoot it once, you can see it got the sound effect for being damaged, if I were to shoot it again, it's still getting those sound effects, and if we continue shooting it, it died with the death sound effect as well. And this is going to work for all of the enemies which we have, and again we're going to be improving up on this and setting up different systems to make this all work together a lot better in the future. But I think that'll be it for today's video, as we've done everything we want to do, we've set up the basic part of shooting, damaging and killing the enemy AI with sound effects as well, again improving upon this massively in the future, bringing all of these different systems together to make it a great little mini game which we're creating. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.